All right, we made it to the last video for chapter one. So that's exciting. Um, there would be technically one more section to this chapter, but it's working with the inequalities and I choose to um, do that once we get into our graphing unit. So here we are, section one night, talking about solving rational equations. So we did simplifying rational expressions. So you kind of notice there was a pattern. Um, there was like the simplifying radicals and then solving radicals and there was simplifying rationals and now there's solving rationals. Um, so we are going to be solving essentially fraction type problems. Now, there's going to be two different me methods that you're going to see um, that you might find one more comfortable than the other. Um, but I also think knowing a good mix between the two. Method number one is when you can see them written as proportions. And when we are talking about proportions, we are having two fractions that are equal to each other. Okay, two ratios that are equal. So number one right here, number two, these are all, um, these are all working with proportions, okay? So you remember seeing those probably in geometry a whole lot. Um, get this off, I don't know if I can. Um, but we had those in geometry when we were working with similar triangles, that good stuff. I don't want to open that. Okay. Um, hopefully it goes off. Uh, I just opened something. Okay, there we go. Maybe that'll help. Uh, so those are proportions. And then the second option that we're looking at here is more so when you are working with a sum or a difference type of situation where we can use the least common denominator to help us out. Now, you are able to simplify by all means and then work with proportions, but I think doing the least common denominator makes it much easier. So I'm going to do one and two. I'm going to have you guys then try and see if you can do three and four and kind of work our way through this. So method number one, condense into a proportion, then cross multiply. So here you've got the proportion. So you cross multiply. That means we're taking four times the quantity of four, y minus four. We're taking 10 times the quantity of y plus three. Sorry if those, maybe those are supposed to be these. Oh, well, I'm trying to make it So I got to distribute here as I look for this. 4 times y, so 4y minus 16 is equal to 10y plus 30, and now it's just a solving game. So I'm going to subtract my 10y, so negative 6y minus 16 equals 30. Oops, what am I doing? And I'm going to add 16 to both sides, so 46. And so then we've got, what do I have here? I've got 46 divided by 6, and that should give us the 23 thirds then. So y will equal a negative 23 thirds. All right, so that right there is solving a radical equation. You have fractions that are involved. Number two, same thing right here. We can go ahead and cross multiply. So 4 times the quantity of t plus 2, 5 times the quantity of 2t minus 1. And now as I distribute, so 4t plus 8. Um, And then equals, and so sorry, I was got distracted there. So 5 times 2t is going to be 10t minus 5. So negative 6t plus 8. And you guys know how to solve linear equations. These are kind of the real basic um, skills that we've done in the past. So t is going to equal 13 6. All right. So let's go ahead and see how you guys do with number three and number four. All right, so here in number three and number four, number three, uh, notice that when you do cross multiply, you do get um, 
you do have to foil the left hand side there so d minus two and d minus two so watch for that same thing with number four you have some foiling to do and you do end up with some quadratics that you work out with now one thing i forgot to mention up on top but we don't have it in any of these situations but it says right here to always remember to check for your solutions once again so because when we are dividing we do have to be careful because you guys know that we can never divide by zero so always take a look at your denominators and once you get your solutions make sure that none of them when you plug back in you get zero in your denominators which all of these we are good with but we will see that in the upcoming problems here all right so the other type of problem that you can work with here is you can work with the least common denominator now this gets a little bit more tricky um but as you think of denominators here you want to think about like factors okay um I'm going to go ahead here and like take 10, for example. Think of that as 2 times 5. Okay, 5 is 5, and we got 5 times P. When we think about the least common denominator, you're trying to find the least common multiple of your denominators. So we did this before, but you want to look at what are all of the factors. All right, so in this situation here, like with the 10 right there, I have a factor of 2 and I have a factor of 5, okay? The next one here, I have a just 5. And then the next one, I have the 5 and I have the P. So my, when I take a look at all of them here, if I look at all of the factors, a 2, a 5, and a P, that means that 10P is my least common multiple with all of these. So I am going to go ahead, and that is my least common denominator and I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation here by 10p. Now watch what happens when I do this. So 10p times 1 over 10 minus 2 times 10p over 5 equals p minus 5 times 10p all over 5p now here's where the magic comes in these tens they cancel this 5 simplifies 10 divided by 5 so it turns into a 2 and then this right here that 10 right there that simplifies to a 2 and the p's cancel so magically we get rid of all of the fractions and we're left with p minus 4p equals 2 times p minus 5. So here I've got a negative 3p equals 2p minus 10. So I've got some little bit of work to do here. So subtract 2, so negative 5p is equal to negative 10, and we get that p is equal to 2. That doesn't put a zero in denominator, so we are good to move forward. So now I take a look at this next part here. I've got a 4y, 4, and 2, and a y. So again, if you know your prime factor, sometimes that helps. Like 4, you know, you can think of that as 2 times 2. Again, here's 2 times 2. So I'm going to, and I've got 2 times y. So when I look at what's in common, well, you've got, oh, this is a y too. So yeah. 2 times 2 times y. I've got 4, which is 2 times 2, and I have 2 and a y. So my least common denominator here is going to be 4y. So that means that I am going to multiply both sides of my equation here by 4y. Now, some of you might be able to do some eliminating as you do this, but I like to show all the steps. So I have 4y times y plus 1 all over 4y equals 1 times 4y all over 4 plus y minus 2 times 4y all over 2y. So again, here's where the magic starts to come in. 4y divided by 4y, 4 divided by 4, 
4 divided by 2, so that's going to turn into a 2, and then those y's are going to cancel. So we have y plus 1 equals 1y plus 2 times y minus 2. So y plus 1 equals distribute, so that's 2y, so that's going to make it a 3y minus 4. So subtract, so negative 2y plus 1 equals negative 4. Move over this way. Negative 2y plus 1. Oops, sorry, I'm going to subtract that one. So negative 2y equals uh, negative 5, and y is equal to now 5 halves. Sorry for that line right there. All right, so 5 halves is going to be our solution. I can see if you, I'm gonna, let me, I'll do the least common denominator part for number seven and see if you can make it from there. But with that six r squared, so think of this two times three times r times r. Three is three times one times r times r, and then you get the two. So least common denominator then, you got a factor of two, you got a factor of three that's in at least one of them, and then you got two r's. So that means that 6r squared is what we are going to be using for your value. So what I want you to do is go ahead, pause, multiply both sides here by 6r squared and see how you do. All right, so for number 7, you should get negative 1 14th. So you can kind of see how things cross out in that case there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pause number an eight, see if you can do this one. All right, so for number eight, you should get five halves. Now, um, some of you, the nice thing is you might start to see some things with this, and you might be able to forego, you know, this initial step here of showing all that, and you might be able to, you know, jump right down to here. So that's great if you can do that, but... In the first stages, it might be a little easier to just write it out and physically see how these values are canceling out. Now, again, notice that so far our situations we haven't had any extraneous solutions. So let's see what happens here as we move on to these next ones, which deal with some more like um, uh, working with some factors, working with some. Um, binomials, things like that. So here you got nine. Now you've got some m squared minus m, you got m minus one. So you gotta figure out what that least common denominator is. So if you start by factoring, so this we can factor out m and so now it's m minus one. M minus one you can't do anything with it. Here's m m minus one. So again look at the factors that are in each denominator. So here I have m and m minus one. So I at least know it has to be that. When I look at the middle one here, I see the m minus 1. Okay, I've already got that. I've got m and m minus 1 in that third one. So that means that my least common denominator is going to be m times m minus 1. So I am going to multiply this side here by m times m minus 1. And same thing over here on the left. So I've got m times m minus 1 times 1 all over, and I'm going to keep it as factored here, minus 1, plus 1 times m times m minus 1 all over m minus 1 equals 6 times m times m minus 1 all over, and again I'm going to factor out that denominator. Reason why I'm just doing that there is so that I can see, okay, these m's are canceling, the m minus 1 factors are canceling. It just makes it a little bit more clear on all that, and I can see that, all right, my fractions are gone. Makes it much easier for us to do. So I'm left with 1 plus m is equal to 6. So I'll subtract the 1, and I've got m is equal to 5. Now, Double check, go back up there. That's not going to have any issues, so we are good to move on. Now, sometimes, like you might see, like number 10 right here, notice that I have a common denominator. See, I have the 5x 
or that yeah, 5x plus 1 and 5x plus 1. If you wanted to, I mean, you can simplify that right away. I can go ahead and say, oh, that's going to be 3 minus x minus 1 all over 5x. I mean, you can do that stuff from section 1. That is totally 100% fine. Um, but also, in a situation like this, when you see that 1, well, that's the same as 1 over 1. And I know that if I multiply both sides here by 5x plus 1, that's just going to get rid of all of my not my fractions right away. So they're going to cancel here. So I'm going to get 3 minus x plus 1 equals 5x plus 1. So it's just another way to do this. So 3 minus x minus 1. Uh, so what, this is 2 minus x, 5x minus plus 1. So I'm going to get a negative 6x. Bring over that 2. So that's negative 6x is equal to negative 1. So x is equal to 1 sixth. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pop down to the last two here, number 13 and 14 call it a chapter for us. Um, first of all, what I want to do here is I'm going to factor out this trinomial here. So this should be z, oh, let's see, z minus 5 and z plus 2. So now when I look at my factors here, so I've got a factor of z minus 5. When I look at here, I've got a factor of z minus 5 and z plus 2. And then when I look here, I've got a factor of 2. So I need to be able to multiply all of those. That's my least common denominator that I'm working with. So we're going to multiply both sides here by 2 times z minus 5 and z, what did I say? Um, that was a minus 2. I hope I have put a minus 2. If not, change that. So 2, z minus 5 and z minus 2. All right, so now you got a 1 times 2 times z minus 5 times z minus 2. Again, you might be able to forego this step. All right, all that equals now 1 times 2 times z minus 5, z minus 2 all over z minus 5 and z minus 2 minus 1 times Z minus 5 um, and oh yeah z minus 2 and I can't forget um, the extra 2 that's there all right that's all over 2 all right cancel some things so z minus 5s are gone here here and those 2s are adios so left with 2 times z minus 2 equals 2 minus, now I just got to be quite careful right here because it's going to be the whole quantity. And I got the 1. I'm going to foil all of that out. So z squared minus 7z plus 10. Now I'm, sub I'm subtracting all of that. So 2z minus 4 equals 2 minus a z squared plus a 7z minus 10. And now you're in the formula which it's going to be a quadratic. Um, I like to work with positive z squared. So I'm going to bring everything over to the left. So that's a positive z squared. Bring that 7. So that's going to be a negative 5z, right? Yes. Um, 2 and a negative 10. So that's negative 8. Bring that 8 over. So that should be a positive 4 equals 0. Do a quick factor here. So z minus 4, z minus 1 equals 0. So z minus 4, z minus 1. So z could equal 4, z could equal positive 1. So again, I go back up and I see they both work so fantastic. All right, so 14, last and final one here. I've got my factor u squared times u plus 1. 
So it looks like we are going to have a U squared and a U plus one as our least common denominator. U plus one. All right, so what I want you to try and do now, pause it, try and see if you can work this out and then we'll come back together. All right, so least common denominator, u squared times u plus one. A lot of things cancel out. Cancel out. Now, just be aware that over here, make sure that as things are canceling out, you're still left with the one. Okay, so that's really important right there that you've got that one that's in that place. We do get a quadratic, we can work it through. And we get negative one and negative two. Now, going back up, if I take a look at my denominators, notice that there's going to be an issue with one of these, and it's that negative one, because negative one plus one would give us zero, and that won't work. So negative one is not going to be a solution. Only negative two will be a solution. All right, there's chapter one in a nutshell. Uh, this is just kind of working out our transitioning, um, reviewing some things from Algebra 2, and now we are ready to move on to Chapter 2.